G'day guys, well uh, it's time to do another Bible review again. This one I'm actually really really excited about because it was a Bible that was gifted to me uh, while I was in the ministry. They um, were able to give me this Bible uh, while I was there and um, I'm very happy with it. I'm very blessed to, uh, to have it um, because it's a bit of a significant Bible as well. It's actually the Kenneth Copeland Word of Faith Study Bible. So you can see there it's beautiful and goldy gilded, I don't know if you call that gilding actually, but it's um, the gold embossing there also. Uh, down the side you can see some, it's an absolutely beautiful Bible to look at. And it's a Kenneth Copeland 50 Years of Ministry Study Bible. So 50 Years of Ministry is an absolute huge feat for any ministry, but um, one such as Kenneth Copeland who's preached the same message for 50 years. It's all about faith in Jesus Christ and has been... Uh, I guess able to prove that through the fruits of his ministry and exactly what they have done. So kudos to Kenneth Copeland, kudos to their ministry. I love what they do. I love all the work that they have around the world and uh, I'm very blessed to have a Bible such as this one um, in my hands. So I'm hoping that lighting is not too too bad for you guys. I know it's kind of coming in and out a little bit. We're in a funny kind of room here I guess and my light is not very bright either. But um, Anyway, so the Bible. Let's let's get into it. Um, basically, it's a it's called a study Bible because they have a lot of study notes throughout the Bible, but there's not a great deal in the text like these. Um, you can see that there's actually no study notes in there whatsoever. Um, but when you go through, you see some extensive writings that they've got on particular topics. So this one in Romans 10 verse 6 to 10 is called the Word of Faith, which we speak. And then through this, they have some amazing insight to uh, the ministry, the faith, the, the core beliefs of, I guess, what Kenneth Copeland was talking about. And they're the things that I really want to know. They're the things that really make me tick, you know. Everybody can have their own interpretation of the, of the scripture and have their study notes in there, which is great. But if I'm looking at a ministry such as Kenneth Copeland's and, and, and seeing exactly the fruits of that ministry, I want to know how he thinks. I want to know... What makes him tick? What makes the, what, what are the seeds that get sown that make that fruit to produce? And that's what you get in here. You know, there's obviously a lot of great theological notes. There's a lot of great doctrinal notes. There's a lot of great in, insightful notes, I guess you could, if that's a word. Um, but I want to know, how does he think? What, what, what actually, you know, propels him to keep going? And what, how does he make those things afresh day after day when he's preached the same thing for 50 years? If you're wondering the same things, then you need to get your hands on one of these Bibles. I think um, you can actually buy them from the ministry. They've got a ministry here in Brisbane. Um, but you can buy them from the ministry for around about 50 bucks. Um, so for the quality of the Bible that it is, at 50 bucks, it's absolutely amazing. I would suggest anybody to, uh, to go and get one of these. Um, and I've been reading through myself. It's the, uh, the MEV version, which is a modern English version, if you can see that there. I haven't actually gone through and read the whole Bible yet. Um, but I've read probably about six or seven books out of the New Testament and most of the translation I actually find to be very good. Uh, if you don't know much about the translation, it was written off the Textus Receptus. It was used the same manuscripts as what the King James used. Um, and it's, it's the idea of it is to put it in a more modern English format um, for people to read. Um, and so I've gone through and, and taken a look and I've got to say most of the scripture is very, very good. Um, I mean, it's always like... A lot of people pretty much get a tape measure and it's like, does any Bible measure up to the King James? Well, you know, it, it, no Bible's going to measure up to the King James in the way that they want it to. Otherwise, they might as well just read the King James. Basically, they want to know, well, how close is it to the King James? And, and well, it's, it's, I mean, it's very close to the King James, but I don't think that would be the question that I would ask. The question that I would ask is, is it a good translation? Is it comparable? If you go back into the Greek and the Hebrew or the words that are different, is it still saying the same thing? And but haven't found anywhere at the moment where it isn't. So um, that uh, lighting there has really been my friend at the moment. Sorry about that if it goes light and dark. The layout of the pages is very nice. So if I go into the Psalms, even in Jeremiah is actually pretty much the same, but if I go into the Psalms, da, 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 it's a very nicely laid out text. It's not too clutterish, um, if you can see that. It gives a lot of room on the side there to write. And the size of the Bible is a, is a little bit bigger Bible. Um, I'm not sure 
what that kind of size constitutes there if you take a look at it. Um, however, because of the cover, it's like an imitation leather cover. It's not a, uh, it's not a, an iron calfskin which you'd find on the church Bible publishers or whatnot, but I think because of the cover, it actually makes it feel like it's not as big as what it is because when you open it, sure, it's going to lay flat wherever you have it and you can, you know, roll it around and that kind of stuff. But there's still a little bit of stiffness there, which I like because when you're going to do notes and when you're going to write in your Bible, you actually need that there. Otherwise, if it's too soft, your pens go right into the paper or your pencils and, and it pushes the, the paper back into itself. You get that terrible embossing when you switch the pages over uh, and all that kind of stuff. So the ghosting as well on the page, there's a little bit, but it's pretty good. So I'm not sure if this camera's going to pick it up there. Maybe if I lift up the page, it might show through a little more. Um, but if you can't see it on the camera, that's basically showing you that it is it is very good. Um, as far as the quality of the Bible goes, I would say that it is right up there. Like, I mean, for 50 bucks, if I'm looking at the top, it's snug. If I'm looking at the bottom, it's snug. And that's what I like because it generally shows you the longevity of the Bible and what you're going to get out of it. Um, if it's not snug in the top and the bottom, what can happen is this part of the front can start to fall out or it can fan out. And before too long, if you don't put duct tape or glue or something like that in there, it'll actually just continue to fall out and you're going to be getting a new Bible every year. Uh, which wouldn't really matter for me because if you want to see some of my Bibles, there's, if that focus is quick enough, there's some of them there. So, anyway, there's a whole lot of Bibles that I've still got to review. Um, the next one that I'm going to review is going to be really awesome. Uh, it's called the Names of God Study Bible. Now, uh, this one I've actually had for a while and I haven't reviewed it and I haven't even used it really that much other than reading it because uh, it's a bit of a special Bible for me. My wife bought it for me, so I've kept it there in the box and I've kept it pristine and that's my keepsake Bible for uh, much later on in life. But anyway, back to, um, back to this one. In the back, you get a whole bunch of clear, empty, not clear, but just blank pages as well. Now, I love blank pages because I write a lot of notes. So, if you're wanting a Bible where you've got enough pages to write notes, or you want to write down the sermons that you've preached, which I like doing, or anything like that, you've literally got, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 pages in the back, and about the same in the front. Um, sorry, only about three in the front. But, one thing that I found really interesting about this version of the Bible, is that in the preface to the reader, it goes through and it talks about what it is, it's to modernise the language, and and whatnot. I, I think, to be honest, some of the language that they've modernised is uh, almost too modern, but it's just my point of view. Um, it shows you the committee of translators that are here. Um, you can see that. Now, there's two or three pages of those, so the, the, the committee that was translating this Bible was pretty formidable. Um, I mean, it was up there with some of the best PhDs and doctorates that we have in the world today um, translating the scripture. So, and what I like about it is that they actually translated the scripture. It's not a translation based off a translation. It's not something that they've gone, we've got a preconceived idea of this, so this is the way that we think it should render. That's actually adding your own interpretation. That's not translating. These guys have gone back to the original Hebrew and Greek manuscripts. They've translated the Bible. This is what they've come out with. Um, and it tells you actually who translated what, what books of the Bible. So. If you know your doctorates and your PhDs and some people that you follow who are Christian theologians, you can see exactly which work that they've done. Um, yeah, really, really cool. And, okay, so that goes into Genesis. But basically what I was looking for in here was they have a preface to the reader and then they've also got a letter to the Queen um, saying to Her Majesty, um, basically like what the King James does to the... Yeah. Dedication. Dedication to Her Majesty Elizabeth II by the grace of God. Um, blah, 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 blah. So, they've tried to keep the same suit there, which is really good. Um, and an overall Bible, it is amazing. Um, if you're looking for a Bible that's going to be really high quality, uh, with a really low cost, and you're going to get some extremely good notes out of it with good scripture, then I would recommend this one to just about anybody. Um, like I said, in Australia here in Brisbane, you can pick them up from the ministry. They're about 50 bucks, which... Um, in these times is extremely cheap for a Bible. I mean, that's comparable with the quality to uh, the local church Bible publishers Bible or the church Bible publishers. Um, it's actually even cheaper than those, and if you're asking me, the quality is just as good. So, 
I pray that this video has been a blessing to you. I pray that it's opened up uh, another option with the uh, Kenneth Copeland 50 Years of Ministry Study Bible. And please check it out. Go and get one. Throw one in your armory. Even have it there as an option to read over. Um, it's very good, very insightful to his ministry, his personality, what God has shown him, and take some of the some of the seeds that have been sown in his life and plant them in your own. So, God bless you all. I pray you have a great day, a blessed day. Go in the power of the Spirit wherever you're going, and take the grace of God with you. Bless you guys.